What's going on guys? Got another garage video for you today. Uh, apologize on the delay in videos. Everything's been uh, kind of hectic here lately trying to get everything uh, lined up and ready to go. Um, so video is going to bounce around quite a bit between here, Dane's place, back here again. Um, took roughly about a month or so to get all the parts and money and finalize everything. So apologize for jumping around so much. But I wanted to get a video put together on this of the new badass performance diff we got in this thing and the new knuckles from Ross Pilgrim. Um, probably going to be a lot of me rambling in this video, so if that's not your thing, I get it. But definitely some good information and some badass parts coming from some good guys. I'll let you guys get into checking it out. Come on. We'll throw in here too just a little bit of a quick comparison of side by side stuff. Um, kind of explain the two say i've never really seen much information from them but definitely way bigger components i know with the halo if you ain't breaking spider gears you're gonna break the pinion if you ain't breaking the pinion you're gonna strip the ring and pinion gear these things take some stuff no get me wrong i've climbed a lot of hills with this thing been up a lot of obstacles probably shouldn't have no business being on but i want more so we're going with this uh, just a quick throw throw around the the threaded part on this of the pinion is bigger than the entire pinion in the halo 30 diff which is factory can amp stuff but regardless um takes rear axles out of a x3 takes halo 30 axles these are different side to side left to right this now takes same axle all the way around the machine. Why that was not done from factory, I have no idea, but here we are. They definitely fixed that. Huge props to them for getting that done. I do believe they were the first ones to do this in a uh, diff of sorts, I guess you'd say. Uh, I know a few other people have kind of copied it or ran with the idea of it because it's a great idea, um, but definitely huge shout out and props to those guys for getting that figured out because having to have three different axles for a can-am is retarded um other side uh this is a blim diff looks like they broke a cutter or something when they were finishing the machining portion of it but we'll never even see that that thing will be totally fine then that looks brand new compared to the rest of the buggy so uh, he did give me just a couple bucks off of this thing for having a tool mark on it, but I told him I didn't care. Probably going to get more scratches than that trying to get this big girl down in there anyway. But um, it all has, I believe, don't quote me, but I believe inside it has its own type of oiling system for desert race guys. This thing will actually pump oil and move oil through all the bearings, where in this thing you're just relying off of the oil getting flung off the ring gear to lubricate everything. This thing actually has some type of pump in it or something. Um, I'm assuming it's gear driven or something inside of there. I haven't got one of these apart yet. I've been debating if I'm going to take it apart or not. Uh, if we do, we'll throw that in the video. If not, we're probably just going to throw her in and see how long it takes to break it if we can. So. We're going to look into uh, break the input shaft or the output shaft on the transmission. We're going to put a massive drive line in this thing and I'm going to hold it on the floor until something gives out and we're going to find the weak point. So that's my plans with it. That's what I told the old boys when we got the diff. They wouldn't sell me the stage five because he's like, yeah, I don't really know about that. So we went with a full spool. Um, probably going to visit the stage five at a later date. All that stuff will bolt right into my case. Uh, but for right now and for what we're trying to do and who we're trying to go run against I know that TC name has been called out there So this is going in it before all that goes down. Hopefully all that lines up and we can make something happen with that been in talks with him, so um, But we're gonna get that thing thrown in there and see what he's about I'll take you guys through kind of putting it in I ain't gonna really be the same for you guys because my stuff's got like an aftermarket bulkhead on it but you'll kind of get a rough idea of how it all goes together and see if it all clears with the hydro steering from ross pilgrim so uh enough of me rambling on let's get throwing some parts in come on all righty well getting this uh performance diff thrown in the can am here and uh curiosity always kills the cat i like looking to see what's inside of things 
Um, seeing they come apart, seeing what we uh, paid four thousand dollars for. Um, so far, I'd say it's not too bad. It's got uh, like I say, Dana thirty ring and pinion gear in it. Pattern don't look too bad. Um, it's kind of weird. The bearings, uh, it's all Tempkin stuff, so nothing super crazy. But the bearings just uh, are a machine fit and instead of like every other ring gear that I've ever seen and full size stuff, you have to press those on. So that's kind of a little difference there. Um, nothing super complex in it, just a straight through spool, nothing crazy in there. Uh, looks like it's got a couple bearings to support the pinion. Other than that, the machine work and everything all looks pretty good. We'll get her thrown back together, see if we can get her to fit in that thing. Come on. I will say one bad thing that I've seen about this that I don't really like just because I've had some issues with it in the past. Hopefully that's not going to be a reoccurring issue with this. But I definitely don't like these. I feel like they could be some tie wire or something on them. I know Halo 30s are notorious for the ring gear bolts coming out. These are a little bit bigger bolt, torque a little bit more. Hopefully they'll stay in. Um, but I know that's gonna cause some havoc if said bolt comes out because it's gonna tear into the side of the case. Um, could potentially get down and break into the ring gear. So it's all pretty new. Hopefully we don't uh, have that issue, but definitely something I see that could potentially cause an issue coming from the Halo 30 world. So let's we'll see how she goes. Alrighty, well I'm sure as you guys seen from the first part of the video, this diff is obviously a little bit larger. Um, for you, those of you that don't know, we uh, built a custom bulkhead for my stuff when I ripped all the stock stuff off. Um, had to do a little bit of modifications for it. The diff, however, doesn't fit through the bottom anymore, which is, kind of sucks because it took me like 12 minutes to change the diff before, but hopefully we don't have that problem no more. So now the upper control arm has to come off and it has to snake through there. You gotta take the hydro ram loose, slide it up out of the way. It is a little bit of a pain to get in there. I do, however, believe it does not matter whose gusset kit you run, because I have a obviously welded double shear in there for the control arm. So mine doesn't come out and I can get it in there with that um, welded in place. So I don't think it matters whose gusset kit you end up running. Um, and then we had to trim out the front here a little bit um, to get extra space because this ring gear is larger. So we'll try to get her snaked up in there and try to get some more fitment and see how she Alrighty. goes. Well, getting the uh, drive shaft mocked up here. Um, give you a little size comparison here. So this is the front yoke on a Halo 30 or Smart Lock U-joint. That is the size that we're going to. A little uh, tip for you guys that are installing one of these Proformance stiffs. Sure, if you guys got a race shop anywhere close or old Chevrolet guys, you probably got a couple of these laying around like we did. This is the output on a Turbo 350, 400, 1310. This is a 120 wall drive shaft. It's also really hot because he just welded it. Fits real nice. Slide that in. We'll get our measurement, put it in there, weld her up. Drive shaft shop at home. Come on. Okay. This has been a uh, big upgrade I've been wanting coming for a long time. Been working with Ross Pilgreen over at NSR. Um, he's kind of had this set up out for some player stuff and a lot of portaled stuff. Um, but I do believe uh, I am the first person to get a set of his front knuckles for this X3 um, that will hopefully eliminate all of my issues with demolishing front knuckles. A lot of people don't have that issue. I do. I've spent thousands of dollars on OEM front knuckles. I never went to the billet knuckles because in my opinion, I don't feel that they are big enough 
for me to not break. I think there's stronger material, but I don't think there's enough material there. And I think those things are right around seven, eight hundred dollars a piece. Um, so in my head, it just didn't make sense. And then I've been talking with Ross, uh, kind of see what he had going on. Um, been working back and forth. Finally got something in the works. Uh, I'll let you guys check these things out. They are beef. I think he said the box was like 50 pounds or 52 pounds. So, and that's just front knuckles, ball joints, or essentially a ball joint, and wheel bearings. So she's thick. We, we like it. So hopefully they're going to be the uh, fix-all to my issues. Um, I'll try to go through it and talk to you guys and show you kind of what pricing is on stuff versus what his stuff is. It's a big penny right off the bat, but if you break it down, it really ain't so bad. So at least that's what I keep telling myself. So I'll let you guys check these out. As you can see, this is the Ross Pilgrim setup. It no longer takes ball joints, which means you gotta have his control arms or you gotta modify your control arms to fit these pinch bungs. And this takes an inch and a quarter heim. That thing is massive. You can almost throw my ball joint through that. And that's a Keller Mega. Um, this is just a standard Keller upper, and I mean, it. it's just not even a comparison. I mean, the pinch bolt that holds the heim tight is the same size as the ball joint. I've snapped numerous of these off. I've broken lowers. I've broken uppers. I've broken the hubs, as you can see from this one, from the s'more trip when I decided to run into the rock at 10 mile an hour, giant undercut. It completely peeled the bearing completely out of the hole. Um, just these things are junk. I haven't had no luck with them. I snap these off all the time. Um, just they're junk. I don't like them. They're like 300 bucks a piece for bearing and everything in them. They're just garbage. Um, depending on who you get for ball joints i think they're anywhere from 400 to 600 dollars a piece or for a set these i believe if i remember right looking at the invoice all these the heims are like 55 dollars or 60 bucks and then these pinch bungs which you should never have to replace a pinch bung but for all of that i think that was like 400 dollars. i think um total setup on this was just a tick over two grand um, like I say, it is expensive. It is a lot of work for cutting the knuckles or his control arms apart. But he does, however, have control arms in the works for an X3. They'll bolt right on. Um, absolute massive stuff. It's got big himes in the inners, so you got no more wearing the bushings out. Um, everything's boxed. They're just straight beef. Seen a couple of pictures of those things, and they're massive. Hopefully we can get it in the works between now and the next ride that I got maybe getting a set of his uppers and throwing on there Is this is a set of mine and Dane's? Um, uppers that we made um, Hopefully gonna get a set of those if it is might not even talk about this right now If not, I'll be putting the bungs in those upper control arms but everything on his knuckle is designed to take a beating I mean everything on these things is massive it's a half inch plate that everything is mounted to. Everything is gusseted, double welded. Um, the heim and everything obviously goes in there. Um, so everything is a double shear, um, brake caliper, stock brake caliper fits, plenty of clearance, run stock rotors, 
Um, nothing crazy there. It's all simple, straightforward stuff. Um, it'll accept your factory tie rod ends, or if you're like me and you're running his hydro kit, um, you can accept those, just change out two spacers. But I am super excited to get this thing thrown in here. Um, I've been waiting on these for a long time. I've been biting the bullet for a long time on trying to find something to do with knuckles. I mean, I break knuckles all the time. Like, there's at least three or four of front knuckles in my toolbox at all times because that's how many I go through. It seems like every two trips, maybe three, I'm changing a knuckle, wheel bearing, something. I destroy them things. I don't know what it is. I ride with a lot of guys that run can -Ams. They don't have that issue, but I destroy them. So hopefully these are going to be the fix for that. They look beef. They look like I'm going to have a hard time tearing up stuff. It's probably going to start hurting me when I tear this thing up now. Um, but I know the inner CV, uh, I know like this factory one to fit with the new performance diff. If you run one of these, you got to go in and grind all this crap out and get it out of the way. Well, you can almost fit that knuckle down inside of there. This thing takes a mass or will hold a massive CV or still run a factory X3 axle. Um, everything's designed to fit with OEM stuff or as what I'm doing, level three Cobras, put those in it, hopefully hold it on the floor. And no longer lift no more but hopefully that's enough of me rambling i'm sure you guys love hearing me talk for 10 minutes at a time we're gonna start getting these things thrown together and hopefully make something out of this get this thing ready to go play so i'm ready for it it's been a long time coming super excited to have these and big shout out to ross pilgrim with nsr for getting me to hook up with these um i like them i I don't get too excited about parts too often because I know I'm going to break them, but uh, I'm pretty confident these are going to hold up for at least a couple rides. So we'll uh, start getting her thrown in. So come on. All right. Well, I can't remember if I really broke it down in price for you or not. Um, if you're doing all this stuff from the get-go, that would be the absolute cheapest possible way to do it because you could buy it all once and be done. Um, or you can be like me and buy everything five times and still not be done uh but i wanted to give you guys a little bit of in-depth price standpoint i guess you could say on these um just comparing apples to apples um two of these loaded wheel bearing the whole nine yards you're gonna have five to six hundred bucks in them two of these loaded ready to go you're gonna have like fifteen hundred bucks in them so, big price difference, but shouldn't tear, or you will tear these up quite often. Shouldn't ever tear these up. So, take that how you want. I've changed probably 15 of these things. I've paid for three sets of these knuckles by now. Um, ball joints. So, color ball joints. Um, depending on who you get them from, what kind of deals you can get, swing, whatever um who's your run they're gonna range from three hundred dollars to like six hundred dollars i run a keller mega lower and a standard keller upper um, i think mine's right around a 580 and dollar mark for all four of them if i remember right um his stuff um these shouldn't wear out if they do it's going to be a while these you got to work on all the time, all the time adjusting them. If you're like me, real particular about your stuff, have them play in it. Um, I take these apart and grease them all the time. Like they're a nightmare. They're a pain in the butt to work on. You got to take them apart all the time. Um, so you got, we'll just say 500 bucks for those. These are $55 a piece. Take that how you want it. I mean, obviously you shouldn't be wearing those out because they're massive um but if you do wear them out that's a pretty cheap part to replace uh the actual bung unless your pinch bolt comes loose somehow and you would have a heim walking up and down you should never wear 
the bungs out. Um, I think for those, for all the Himes and all the bungs, that was like 400 bucks. Um, and then shipping and everything. I think the total bill on these front knuckles is right around two grand, maybe 2,100 uh, with shipping and everything. Um, so it is expensive right off the rip, but when you start adding it up, if you're gonna be hard on parts and tear stuff up, it's uh, best to just go ahead and bite it once. Uh, buy once, cry once type deal. And I wish I would have had that option to do a long time ago. Maybe if you guys are looking to upgrade, this would be the smarter choice in my opinion to go for. If you're gonna hit the ignorant stuff like uh, we all try to ride. And the control arms. So on control arms, uh, I believe, I haven't priced 100%, so don't quote me fully on it, but I know CT's lower arms are right around 1000 bucks, maybe plus or minus a little bit who you're getting them from. Um, so you're 1000 bucks on those, and I think uppers, depending on who's you buy, are right around the seven $800 mark. I know Ross's lower control arms and upper control arms are around the thousand dollar for the lowers and i think 800 for uppers if i remember correctly they like said don't quote me full on prices but control arms are pretty much the same price as anywhere else's and in my opinion his stuff is built bigger and better um i have wadded up one or two ct lowers uh, i've been a couple uppers um I've never ran CT uppers or anybody's. I've always just had my stuff. This is a inch and a half, 120 wall. They've been fixed a couple times, so they got uh, slugs in them. So they're probably, I guess, considered a 250 wall probably because they've got stuff. They've been bent. They've been fixed, and they're they're heavy. So they're pretty much almost a solid tube the whole way now. Um, but I haven't really tore up a whole lot of those tore up a few but for a price point standpoint i'm sure i'm just rambling on again but ross's upper and lower control arms are pretty comparable to anywhere else that you're going to go i don't think his stuff really has a warranty on it but he's been super cool about i broke steering ram mount clamp uh the steering flag he had me one a couple days i mean he don't really advertise a warranty um but if you tear up his stuff, it looks like he takes pretty good, pretty damn good care of his customers. So I know I've had a really good relationship with him so far. Hope to keep moving forward. I know he's got some badass stuff coming for the rear of an X3. Hopefully going to shave some weight, but somehow make it bigger. Curious to see how that's going to go. Um, Cause I know we adding some weight to this old girl. She's getting heavy in her old age, but uh, yeah. So figured to try to give you guys a rough standpoint from price wise. I know that's been a big thing for me. I know ZRP knuckles are like three grand or something crazy by the time you spend anything and everything with them. And I still think they're gonna break because they're the exact same knuckles as these. They're just made out of better material. And that material right there, no matter what you do, ain't very thick. And depending on what you use, I know they can use like a mono ball and stuff on some of them, but you still got to run different aftermarket lowers or uppers. And you got all that stuff and it's all tiny. It, that's the biggest stress point I can preach to this, I guess you could say. Everything else that anyone makes aftermarket is tiny. This isn't tiny no more. That's what I want. Stop building junk everyone like get on ross's bandwagon of build shit that don't break like that's what i want i want it to where when i hit the tree it hurts and then i look at the tire and it's still straight that's a hundred percent what i'm after with anymore tired of breaking parts it's getting crazy expensive to just maintain this thing so hopefully this is going to be the answer to slow that down a little bit but, all right, well, enough of me rambling. You guys have heard my preaching to the choir. I think Ross's stuff's the way to go. Stuff looks sick. Um, and I still paid pretty much full price for it. So, I mean, that, take it for what you want. Um, me and him's been working together in this, that, and the other. But 
I ain't getting no crazy deal. He didn't send them to me for free. I'm plugging good parts. That's it. That's all there is to it. So, all right, let's get this thing start cutting apart. All righty. Well, back a few days later, a couple hours, a couple grinding discs, a couple flap discs, uh, some welding wire, and all that good stuff. Uh, I have forgotten how much uh, old Daddy Dane has spoiled me. I can still do the stuff, but it is amazing how uh, easy and flawless he makes it to be. I guess that's the uh, one of the perks of being a professional at this stuff. And uh, I guess part-time wannabe like me. Um, finally getting these uh, bungs and everything welded up in the control arms. Ain't the greatest. Dane could have done a hell of a lot better. I'm sure NSR stuff's a lot better. But for the time frame we got the budget that i have left this is what we got this is what we're doing I'm sure it's going to bend to other things so I'm sure she'll be just fine if you don't like it you can criticize it in the comments i love reading reading it going on with it picking at it internet warriors are always fun so but I'll let you guys check it out got uh, one upper done got a lower tacked up ready to weld it out but uh that's what we came up with so far Ended up cutting everything off at the uh, the shock mount. Got everything welded in there. Set the camber and caster and everything. Got the axle plunge and everything right. Obviously, it's adjustable. Um, you still got to find a happy medium. But that's what we come up with. Uh, I ain't no uh, dime stacker by no means. But I'd say for... Uh, who we are and what we're doing uh she'll get the job did so on to the lower one and then the other side come Good. on wrapping up the lower here uh finally got it all welded up and pieces cut and all the good stuff um show you a little bit of the difference here um so when these big blocks come obviously they look like that I took and I didn't really like how low that stuck out. Obviously it goes down here, but I cut the back of it off at an angle. Cause I didn't like how much those stuck down um, for us trying to get every ounce of clearance we can get out of this thing. Um, tried to cut that off a little bit and uh, make a little bit more high clearance, I guess you'd say. Um, it turned out pretty good. Uh, especially for guys don't do this every day but that's what we came up with got our welds all the way around it's got plate boxed in it kind of beveled the side so that way anything does hit it it's not just a flat square kind of has to a little bit of roundness to it or i guess as round as you can make a square block that's what the top side looks like get her all painted up in the old rattle can special and we'll be on to the next side and I believe after that yank the diff out uh, probably throw some rattle can on the rest of that stuff should be good to put it back together and throw some axles in this thing and uh put her on the ground so i'm ready she's been uh out of commission for quite a few weeks now I am ready to get back on the trails and get some good old trail therapy with a couple of uh, rowdy friends. You know what I'm saying? Come on. So we'll uh, get the other side wrapped up. I'll probably uh, get that one all done and I'll let you guys hopefully check it out and see what it looks like with all the suspension hung back on it and take you through an articulation, make sure everything works and does what it's supposed to. So, all righty. Well, I wanted to jump on here real quick and apologize for the. Uh, delay in videos i've been uh slacking in that portion of it but we however ain't been slacking on the uh effort put into getting this old girl back on the trail uh it is now 1 a.m gotta go to work at five so burning the midnight oil candle at both ends uh trying to pick up the phone and get videos for you guys when i can uh, this video is going to jump around quite a bit between dane's shop here just anything and everything um short little rundown of everything that's going on a uh, month or so ago uh, maybe two months now uh, i was i guess you'd say 
smart enough or dumb enough to uh, call out the goat, Mr. TC himself, and he uh, accepted. So by the time this video comes out, uh, I believe we're going to be in Wellsville. We've got a couple big hills on the list. Uh, sounds like we got a pretty rowdy group going, um, small group, trying to keep everything uh, hush hush so we can get there and hit the park without having uh, the publicity crowd follow us around. As much as we like meeting everybody and hanging out with everybody, it does make it a little difficult to get around places like Wellsville if you've got a group of 30 or 40 rigs trying to follow you around everywhere. So we've been trying to keep that on the hush hush. But uh, like I say, hopefully when this video comes out, that event had already happened. But for now, I'll let you guys go through and uh, Check out what we've been doing to this thing. Give you a quick little rundown of what you're gonna see in the video coming up. Come on. Alrighty. Well, I have seen a few people cut a set of Zillas, but I can't say I've ever seen anybody cut a set like this. I hit up old Daddy J with uh, Warpath Customs. And he got me to hook up on a set of brand new 32 inch stickies and I decided I was gonna cut them in half, essentially. So we made us a tractor tire that's sticky. Kind of resembles a TSL on a full size. It turned out super sick. I like them. Uh, gonna go find out if they work. But uh, other news, got that performance diff all thrown in there. She tucked away in there nice and tight. Got new Cobra axle, King Cobra axles up front. They're level three. The Proformance diff accepts the rear axles. So they're big dogs, biggest thing we can fit in the front of this thing. I'll try to hold that skinny pedal down there. Hopefully she'll stay cranking. Uh, real interested to see what's gonna move the weak link now. So hopefully the diff is no longer the weak link. Hopefully the axles take it. Hopefully I can put a fuse in it with a drive shaft and we can uh, hold some 32s wide open. Uh, new knuckles from Ross Pilgrim with NSR. I believe I'm uh, one of the first ones to get these on a Can-Am. He's had them out on a Polaris for a little while. Uh, these things turned out sick. I had to fab up the ends and everything on my already control arms. Uh, Dane built the uppers, there are a set of CT boxed lowers, um, fabbed up the bones to put the uh, inch and quarter himes in there, and gave the old girl a good uh, rattle can job. So she looks good for pictures again until I uh, roll over upside down on a rock. Um, big thanks to Dane, we got this, if you watched the s'more videos, ended up tearing up the cage a little bit, so we come in Slugged it, put a new tube in it, fixed all the good stuff. Um, ended up getting both sides of it. Had a little rock ding on the other side. So he fixed that side and we did the same thing over here. I don't know how much of that I videoed because we were more worried about getting that performance diff fit in there. But enough of me rambling. I'll let you guys get to checking this out and probably hear me ramble some more in the video about uh, what we done to this old girl but let's get to it come on alrighty well turns out uh as i said a couple times in the video uh jumped around quite a bit apologize for that it's kind of hard to keep a video nice and smooth and uh straightforward i guess when the whole video takes roughly a month to make with trying to do the diff the new axles knuckles and everything um, cause this is after the Wellsville trip. Um, so far everything took it pretty decent for what it was. Uh, you're going to want to stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to try to put that video first Wellsville video out, uh, middle part of this week. Uh, it got, uh, pretty rowdy in a hurry. I'm sure some of you guys have probably already seen the video of me tumbling down, uh, the bonus line on Blue Panther. Uh, got to tear up a whole bunch of stuff there, but... The performance diff took it, snapped the drive shaft off there. So we're gonna put a bigger drive shaft in it now uh, that we've broken the 120 wall drive shaft with factory ends. Um, 
Got stuff in the works to get a 1310 drive shaft from front to back. We'll see if we can move that weak link into the transmission. Hopefully break that and then we can back down on the drive shaft wall thickness and have that be a, a fusible length and a cheap part to fix. Um, but one, again, wanted to give a big shout out to Proformance. Uh, the diff's expensive, but so far it's worth it. So hopefully she stays that way. Super happy with it so far. Fitment of it was good. Um, probably be a lot better than stuff that's not so modified, I guess you'd say. But for what I got going on, works great. Hopefully we can hold that right pedal down and stay in her. Uh, Cobra axles lived up and Ross's new knuckles is doing some work. Had one get a little tweaked in the wreck, but not mad at all about that. I think that would have broken any knuckle that you put on the front. And the knuckle itself is still good, just the steering flag is a little bent, but we'll take that. That's nothing, 20, 30 minute fix and should be good to go. So, but like I say, big shout out to Proformance Diff. Ross Pilgrim with NSR, and uh, Cobra Axles, uh, Jay Wilson with Warpath Customs. Uh, he kind of helped out on the trip and done a big sponsor uh, on that. So be sure and hit him up for any of your parts needs. I know he gets anything and everything at a hell of a rate. Probably ain't gonna find anybody gets better deals on tires. He's got a little bit of anything and everything he can get, whether you uh, are mild wild Super ATV, I mean, you name it, them boys can probably get it. And probably had a better deal than most of them. And I love supporting people that want to support us and help see the channel grow. But that's going to do it for this video. Appreciate the hell out of you guys watching. Be sure to stay tuned. This next one's going to be a good one. So come on.